The University of North Carolina men's basketball program is missing something that I thought they would never go without. NBA stars. I had I had like a realization uh, yesterday. So I'm on Twitter, right, scrolling. I was actually on the uh, the the exercise bike. Shout out to me, huh? Hey, watching the Canes game. Okay, little little break in the action. I'm scrolling on my phone. Okay, and I see North Carolina posted a uh, a graphic. So the UNC basketball team posted a graphic cheering on their players in the NBA playoffs. And, you know, good luck to our our guys in the playoffs. And in the graphic, I was like, all right, let me, let me see what they're working with. A lot of a lot of schools do this, by the way. Not breaking, you know, they're they're not, you know, breaking some kind of new trend. Uh and I looked at it and I went, That's it? Because you'd think like North Carolina NBA playoffs, like how many all stars? You think like uh how many contenders are depending on a big performance from yeah. a, from a tar heel? Massive starters. This is the entire group in the in the picture. Kobe White. Okay. Harrison Barnes, okay, Pete Nance, Nasir Little, and Cole Anthony. It was kind of jarring. I was going like, even though I was looking at it on my phone, I like flipped the phone over to see if there was anyone on the back, right? Like, like is where's oh, this, where, where's the rest of this? Do I have to scroll? Is there a thread? Is like, where, is this part one of one three? Of, part one, yeah, yeah. It was jarring. And by the way, you know. Again, weirdly, backhanded compliment for North Carolina. I expected there to be a lot more. So what did I do next? I was like, wow, maybe it was just a bad team year. All the all the stars from Carolina must be on teams that didn't make the playoffs. So I went online and I Googled uh, NBA players from UNC. These are the players that were not in the playoffs. Reggie Bullock, Leaky Black, Cam Johnson, Walker Kessler, and Dayron Sharp. Kessler didn't even finish his collegiate career at the University of North Carolina. He transferred to Auburn. And he's probably the best of the bunch. He's pretty good. So I started having this thought. What happened to Vince Carter and Antoine Jameson <laughs> and Rasheed Wallace? Yeah. Right? I mean, even like peak Harrison Barnes, because Harrison Barnes isn't what Harrison Barnes once was. Like like lineup of death with the Golden State Warriors, Harrison Barnes. Yeah. Like, early in the Warriors' run of championships, Harrison Barnes was a starter, massive contributor for that team. Where's Danny Green? I'm not asking for, like, you don't have to be a two-time MVP. I'm going, like, where's the starter on a championship, like, a favorite? There is social currency among having those players. And social currency is important right now because, like, there's this whole NIL thing in the transfer world, right? Guys are going to the highest bidder. It's a pretty baller statement to go. You can go there and get a hundred grand more, or you could come here and be set up to make a hundred million in the NBA. Which, by the way, Danny Green did. Danny Green made a hundred million dollars. Harrison Barnes over a hundred million dollars. So there is something to be said for yeah. You could go chase every single NIL check and go be you know big. Big uh, fish, small pond somewhere where they max out all their budgets to get you 150 grand more than you'd make here. Or you could come here, make it what we can pay you, what our NIL can support you with, and we'll set you up to go to the NBA and have a 15-year career and make more money than you know what to do with. And I hate to say this, North Carolina fans, because now, right, I don't know if anyone else does this, right? I'm on the exercise bike. I'm to the point where now my brain is just cranking and I'm just I'm just thinking. Uh my entire life until I don't know when it changed. This is a role reversal. Mm-hmm. It used to be North Carolina had all the pros and Duke had all the oh, well, he was a good college player. A lot of lot of patting on the head, like, oh, he's a good college player. Right? And then North Carolina went on to have like if I was in middle school and somebody said you were going to take all the NBA players from North Carolina and all the NBA players from Duke and they were going to play pickup, it would have been laughable. You would have said North Carolina is going to win by a billion. If you were to do that right now, who's guarding Tatum? Who's guarding Paulo Boncaro? Who's guarding Kyrie? Who's guarding Brandon Ingram? Guard and Zion. <laughs> who's guarding Zion? Who's guarding R.J. Barrett? Like the, 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 it's it's now a wash in the other direction. So you darn sure know what Duke's saying in those recruiting battles. 
Yeah, you might be able to go somewhere else, get a little bit more NIL money. I don't think you could, but maybe you could. But what I do know is we got a whole list of people that are on track to make hundreds and hundreds of millions of dollars in the NBA that developed for, you know, between four and 20 months in, in, in Durham. And who's going to be the number one pick in next year's draft? Everybody thinks Cooper Flagg. Who's going to be uh, a top three pick? Everybody thinks Kamen Malawash. North Carolina needs to find a way to get more NBA player production. And I don't know if it's a recruiting thing. Like, your North Carolina, I have to believe you're, you're choosing the players you're bringing in. Like, you're bringing in some some. some you're names. North Carolina. Yeah. Like I, I, you're North Carolina. <laughs> I was going to try to explain what that meant. I don't think it needs to be explained. That is the explanation. You're North Carolina. That's the explanation. You're UNC. Like I, do you know what I want? I want because Jerry Stackhouse just uh, lost his job, right? He yes, was, he was at Vanderbilt, the head coach there. I want him as the number one assistant. How much it costs on Hubert Davis's staff, and I want him to bring some of that swag back. And I want him to recruit people with the goal of I'm going to show you how to be a pro. Hubert's going to show you how to win in college because that is the main goal. That is still the number one goal of a college program. Oh, yes. Hubert's going to show you how to win in college. I'm going to show you what it takes to be an all-star in the, in the league. And then when all that is said and done, you're going to win in college, you're going to go to the league, you're going to be an all-star, and you're going to remember who had this conversation with you, and you're going to turn around and donate to our NIL collective. Our NIL collective. That's the conveyor belt, the cycle you need to start. I mean, make no mistake, like, if you watch Duke, every single time they get a commitment and there's that weird portion where you get a verbal commitment from a recruit, but you can't mention their name publicly because they haven't signed yet, they post that video of all of the the current NBA players saying, another one, and it's 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 Kyrie, and it's Tatum, and it's Zion, and they're not fools about it. And by the way, UNC wasn't fools about it when they had the lead either. Like, that is something you need to get the pipeline cranking back up again. You can love Armando Baycott, and you should love Armando Baycott. There's a reason why he played five years in college. It's because he was probably never a lottery pick. 